it is great to be uh, out here today with so many transit supporters uh, as we jointly take a, another step forward to make San Diego cleaner and greener. Uh, we are on a journey, as I think many of you know collectively, to protect our environment for future generations with our landmark climate action plan. Uh, together we're slashing greenhouse gases, creating more housing opportunities, uh, and increasing alternative mobility options by installing hundreds of miles of new bike lanes. All of these actions put us closer to reaching our goal of reducing GHGs by 50% by 2035 citywide. But of course, we can't stop there. We must continue to make the infrastructure investments that encourage more and more people to get out of traffic and to get out of their cars. And that's of course why we're here this morning. This three mile bus lane aims to reduce traffic, increase ridership, and of course protect our environment. The Boulevard Busway, as it is affectionately called, will serve more than 10,000 riders who use the Rapid 215 uh, each day. And I will tell you, there's no reason not to join us because MTS is offering free rides starting today through January 17th. Uh, and local businesses all up and down the road are gonna be offering uh, free promotions. It's really been a collected effort to get this uh, to get this new bus lane open, to have that mobility, to have this option, to make it quick, to make it easy, to make it affordable, and of course, as I just mentioned, uh, for the time being, free. Uh, so I can't thank enough everybody who's uh, been here with me today. I'm going to invite uh, some other speakers uh, who have really been a big part of this as well. As I said, this has really been a joint effort between the City of San Diego, MTS, Sandag and others. Uh, and first up, our chair of our MTS board, uh, please welcome Supervisor Nathan Fletcher. Supervisor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mayor. Um, you know, the, the Boulevard Busway really is an, an innovative, collaborative approach to make transit work. Uh, we want to get folks from where they are to where they want to be, and we want to we want to do it in the most efficient way. This is also an example of what can happen when MTS works with the city when we work with the business community in this area, when we work with our community partners and leaders, when we all stand together and say, we're gonna find a better way um, and we're gonna make progress. Um, and I think everyone who's a part of this team and coalition is doing just that. They're helping improve the lives of our residents and our community. They're helping improve our environment. They're helping improve our economy. And it is showing that forward progress is possible. Now, as the chair of MTS, I want to give credit to the chair of MTS that launched this program and helped do it, and that's Council Member G Georgette Gomez. I recently took over as chair of MTS, uh, but she was the chair that on so many of these issues that are coming to fruition today was the one who spearheaded it, who drove it, and who helped see us there. And so, Councilwoman Gomez, I want to give you all the credit for getting us here today, and I'm pleased to be here to just represent a lot of the work that you initiated and started. And so, congratulations on today. It's a wonderful thing. You know, every day almost 10,000 trips uh, take place uh, along the Rapid 215. Uh, these are folks that are getting to work, they're getting to school, they're getting to their medical appointments, they're getting out uh, and living their life. And at MTS, we're committed to making sure that we're helping serve those folks who would like to use it. Additionally, creative and innovative ways are a wonderful opportunity to bring new riders into the system. At MTS, I'm thrilled to report that while many transit agencies may be struggling, our ridership continues to go up. And it continues to go up because we continue to look for innovative ways to make transit better serve us all. And this is another step in a series of things that we've been doing to demonstrate not only the viability, but the essential nature that MTS and transit play to San Diego. And I think that the partnership that we have with our community here, and in particular the business community and the community and advocacy groups that are a part of this region, is vital to us all moving forward together. And so today really is a day that we should celebrate. Uh, I'm incredibly grateful to Mid-City Can, to the El Cajon BID and Tootie and the city, uh, to council members Ward and Gomez, to the mayor, to our incredible MTS staff uh, and everyone who brought it through to fruition. And so this is a great thing. We're gonna make it free for a little while so folks can get, get used to using it. Uh, and we hope this can be another step in the process uh, of elevating San Diego, uh, of elevating our transit, uh, and demonstrating to the public how committed we are as an agency to better serving them. So congratulations for everyone who's here today, uh, and this is a good day we should all celebrate. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor.
Thank you, Supervisor. Well said. Uh, next up is our uh, former chair of MTS and someone who's been a strong transit proponent, uh, proponent and a real leader, Council President Georgette Gummins. Council President. Good morning, everyone, and a happy new year to all of you. That is, uh, this is an exciting day to be starting a new decade um, in the right way and actually putting attention to a system that uh, over time really hasn't gotten it to the level that we're trying to get to now, which is it is time that we start elevating our transportation, our public transportation system to ensure that we're creating a real choice for San Diegans. The BRT 215 was introduced in San Diego in 2014, I believe. And the way that it was supposed to be designed then, uh, we're getting to it now, which is actually doing a dedicated lane for buses. That's the way that we should be doing, and now we're doing it right. So I'm very happy to be here with all of you, but this really is speaking to the commitment that the city of San Diego has, that MTS has, um, and elevating our transit system f to create a real choice for San Diegans to move around. We need to get beyond the vehicles. We need to create another choice that is good for the environment, that is good for our economy. Mm -hmm. And I'm very happy that this project was done in leadership with other organizations outside of government. When there's political will, when the business community is coming together, when nonprofits are coming together and really pushing for the city for the agencies to do the right thing. We get great projects such as this pilot that we are launching. And I'm hopeful that we're gonna take it all the way to San Diego State. Um, and I'm hoping that that is the next step, that we continue this pilot all the way to San Diego State, which is where this 215 goes, but also do it outside of just this region because we have other regions that are needing transit and they're wanting real transportation. So I'm looking forward and ensuring that we are elevating our transit system in San Diego, that we're doing it for our residents, that we're doing it for to improve our local economy, and more importantly, that we're doing it so we have a future ahead of us because it is time that we start elevating the critical moment that we're facing on our environment. We need to do things differently. And this project is a perfect example of doing things differently. So I'm excited and let's continue doing more. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Uh, next up, a uh, council member for this area who's been a strong advocate for uh, different mobility options. Uh, please welcome council member Chris Ward. Chris. Great. Thank you, Mayor Faulkner. Thank you everybody for coming out here today. We're at the western terminus of El Cajon Boulevard, the start of this new opportunity here and hopefully the start of something big for the uh, whole transit system network here in the city of San Diego and the sister cities that we also serve. Uh, it's my pleasure as the council member for District 3 to be uh, here with you all today, just really celebrating uh, this monumental time to be able to try something new, to try something different. We have to look at our streets so much differently to be able to accommodate different ways to be able to get around, to circulate, to make sure that we can get away, we can get from A to B more efficiently and that's exactly what this pilot project for the bus only lane seeks to do. Here on El Cajon Boulevard, this is some of the oldest communities here in San Diego, and it's gone through so many generations of evolution here, and we are right now going through the next transformation. You see over here on Florida and Alabama, we're about to open up, open up hundreds of new units, and of course, up and down the boulevard here, we have more residents coming in every day to support the businesses and the great business community that we already have here. So thank you, 2D and the El Cajon Boulevard BID for their leadership as well to say yes, to push this, to try to make sure that we can get around the mid-city in a very different uh, and very cost-efficient and very effective way. Um, this is about increasing ridership. This is about making transit work. And so we are really looking forward to be measuring and to be understanding uh, what comes out of this pilot project so that we can hopefully emulate this in other places across the city and other places across this transit network. Um, through a lot of this opportunity, I think we're gonna see that increased ridership and I'm so excited for the next 10 days. We can't underscore this enough, it is free. So hop on the 215, see what it can do for you to be able to move up and down the boulevard in a very different way and join us in the celebration and we're gonna continue to do more uh, to be able to make transit work here in San Diego. Thank you so much.
As the council member just mentioned, our, our local businesses really are, are the lifeblood uh, of any neighborhood, but particularly here. And so next up to uh, give us his perspective is Tootie Thomas, El Cajon Boulevard, BID. Tootie? Hey, thank you all for coming and welcome to the Coulevard. Uh, thank you, Mayor Faulkner, County Supervisor Nathan Fletcher. Thank you to Georgette Gomez, who's been a fantastic uh, partner in this. And Chris Ward, thank you so much. Nicole Capretz, who's a great friend and partner of ours. Um, Paul Jablonski, thank you so much. Beryl Foreman, I want to call her out because uh, she's our marketing and mobility coordinator on the boulevard. Um, and Adrian Granda, thank you so much for your uh, stewardship on this um, from the city's perspective. So, transportation equality allows for students to reach educational opportunities workers to access employment opportunities, and businesses to grow and better their communities and business hubs. The boulevard is a grand roadway of opportunity that ties six neighborhoods together in the mid-city. Opportunity abounds. Barrow came back from a conference fired up about a dedicated bus lane. As part of our Boulevard 2020 plan, we held four community town halls and the neighborhoods and businesses reacted with positivity about a piloted bus lane that ensured very little parking loss and an opportunity to bring the community along for a more frequent and faster ride. We pushed for a shared bike element and what a sweet and safe ride it is. Thank you for joining us in a sensible and assured success approach. Well done, Tootie. Uh, next, we talked about reaching our uh, climate action goals uh, from uh, somebody who really needs no introduction from the Climate Action Campaign, Nicole Caffers. Nicole? Thank you, Mayor. Good morning, everybody. I'm very excited to be here because I get to make a very special announcement. Uh, so Climate Action Campaign is a climate watchdog organization with a simple mission to stop the climate crisis. So what that means is we're always watchdogging the mayor to make sure he's doing his job. So I'm not always invited to events, but today we're celebrating. And the mayor actually said to me, oh, you're speaking today? I'm, that's dangerous, but not today. This is a full on celebration because we're all on the same page and we're moving in the right direction. One of the biggest goals of the city's groundbreaking climate action plan was to get 50% of commuters to use bike, walk, or transit to get to work. A really audacious goal that the city committed to. And today, this is the beginning of how we're going to actually achieve that. And I'm so proud of the mayor and the supervisor and MTS for helping this dream come alive. Because it's not just about the bike lane and the bus lane, but it's about all the infill that's going on El Cajon Boulevard. Because you pair those two things together and that's how we get people to believe there's a viable option to driving to work. And so this is really exciting that we're gonna see this in real time and hopefully we'll get to see increased ridership. The um, special announcement though, is that we're not only making the dream about uh, transit come alive and, and uh, better bike access come alive, but we, in partnership with the Boulevard BIA, have secured private funding for 54 shade trees, tree canopy all along El Cajon Boulevard, um, particularly, hopefully Council Member Gomez will be very pleased with this, in City Heights area, from Highland Avenue to Fairmont because what we want to do is create a model climate corridor, right? You want to merge all of the best quality of life improvements from the climate plan into neighborhoods that deserve it the most. So how awesome is it going to be that there's going to be a bus and bike only lane? There's infill projects, hopefully a lot of affordable infill projects, um, but also we're going to make it better and easier to walk along the boulevard and have that shade tree canopy, which again, the, another outcome of the climate action plan that I always like to talk about is making life better. So if we are going in this climate crisis to become hotter and drier as a region, actually putting shade trees up means that we can continue to allow people to get outside and to patronize our local business and to connect as community members. And so that's why we're super excited to be here with everybody. We thank everybody um, and let's plant those trees. <laughs> Very well done. Well, thank you. Um, I think each and uh, every one of us will be available to answer uh, any questions one on one. And I think we're going to join us for an inaugural ride. So uh, thank you very much. Thank you, guys.